to the DevOps Library. This is Episode 3, Jenkins for Operations. If you haven't heard of Jenkins, it's something that your developer friends have probably been using for several years, but it can help tremendously on the operations side as well. Jenkins is an open source continuous integration and build server, and what this basically means for operations is it provides a great place to run things over and over reliably, and connects easily to a variety of other tools such as source control. An even simpler explanation is if you have a bunch of scripts that your team runs regularly, Jenkins will give you the perfect interface for running those scripts on any and as many servers as you'd like, while also tracking who ran what and when. Let me go ahead and show you a little bit about what we're talking about. Once you've installed Jenkins, this is exactly what the interface is going to look like. Note that if you need help installing Jenkins, just visit wiki.jenkins-ci.org or use our Vagrant file to get started immediately. Now back to Jenkins. Jenkins uses the word job to refer to any process that consists of a step or multiple steps to run. We're going to begin by creating a job that runs a short bash script. Click create new job, put a name for the job, and select freestyle project and then hit OK. Now you should see the job creation screen. Type in any description that you want and scroll down to build. Click add build step and then select execute shell. Then type in a bash command or a script that you'd like to run. Now hit save. You should now see the summary page for the job. You can hit build now to run the job and go ahead and go and try that now. You should see a little blue ball show up at some point under build history. Uh, for some reason Jenkins defaults to blue instead of green for the color of success, but you can change that pretty easily. Anyway, go and click that. Now go to the console output. You should see the output of the command exactly as if you ran the script yourself on the server. You'll also see who started the job, which will default to anonymous until you set up authentication. On that note, Jenkins supports LDAP, uh, you can hook it straight up to AD, to your domain controllers, and also supports a variety of other authentication schemes with a ton of options for setting permissions. You could have one team that just makes the jobs and another that just runs those, for instance. Now let's try making a slightly more complicated job. Let's say you want to run a script that creates a folder, but you want to specify the name of that folder. Go back to the Jenkins homepage, create a new job, but this time, check the box that says, this build is parameterized on the job configuration page. Then click add parameter and choose string as a type of parameter. Go ahead and give the string a name, a default value if you'd like, and a description. Now add a build step. This time type mkdir space dollar sign and then in brackets put the name of the string that you declared before on the first line. Hit enter and on the second line type ls. Go ahead and look at the post build actions while you're here and you'll see that you can automatically send out an email when a job fails, trigger other jobs, and a handful of other options. There's also literally infinite plugins that you can download for Jenkins. And you, you can do crazy stuff, trust me. Don't worry about adding any of the post build actions right now, but later on they will come in handy. Now hit save. Try to build the job and you'll see that it now asks you to fill in a parameter. Type in whatever you'd like the name of the folder to be and hit build. Run it one more time, this time using a different name for the folder, then view the console output. You should now see that both folders have been created using the name that you specified. While this is just a tiny fraction of what you can do with Jenkins, once you get the hang of it, your team can set jobs for just about any task you can imagine, using Bash, PowerShell, GitHub for version control, automated testing to verify that jobs are completed, pretty much anything else you can think of. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions.